I knew episode 33 would start off on a dour note when I was called into the office of Fort Fritz, where I, host Fritz, was joined by co-host Man Daddy. Hi. Kaz. Hello. And Nick Spry. Hi. I remember the smell of the coffee, recently done percolating in the corner, and also an air of unease. But, Fritz, we have all these papers in the mail. You have to sign them. Boss, 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 look. What, what? We got insurance papers. We got uh, We got mail. We got invitations to things. That's trash. Throw that out. That's also trash. Boss, you didn't even look. Doesn't matter. Throw that out, too. Now, what is this thing? It's an invitation. Really? Why is it already opened? Um, we had to make sure everything was all on the up and up for you. I don't like that at all, man, daddy, but let me see what it says. <gasps> I can't read this. Someone else read it to me. I, uh, it's, it says, uh, it says, uh, race car and, uh... Race car! <clears throat> like, there's, uh, like, um, there's a squiggly line right there with a dot over it, uh... It, zip, zippy... Duda. Give me. All right, oh my. give it to Nick Spry. Read it to me, Nick Spry. Boss, boss, it's it's an invitation. Mm-hmm, I've to, gathered to a a gala opening. Really? Yes, yes. What kind of gala opening? Uh, it says here it's for a museum. A museum? A gala for a museum? Yes, yes. It says it's for a murder museum. No shit. Ooh. Sounds too spooky, boss. It says also here. Yes, shit! Exclamation point. Now, what would I wear to a museum opening? You can't be thinking about going to this thing, boss. I have to, Kaz. I have to. It's not going to work. It's got. It's got to goddamn work. The topic of the other papers was the <laughs> the fact that you are coming up very shortly on one of your insurance policies. I, okay, give them back. I'm sorry. I, it looked like junk mail. Oh, hold on. Let me see. This is why. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, wow, that is a lot this of money. Is what happens when we make him the boss? I know. This is. And just, I threw two more away. Give, okay, give them. Give them here. Just go. It's three million dollars. Jeez, that's a lot of money. Why? Yeah, why? For have you already death. seen these? I'm good at numbers. I can't read. I can't read invitations. I'm good at numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very specific skill. Look sir. at the name. Yes. Felix. Look who took it out. It, <laughs> that son of a bitch. See. Same day. Wait a minute. You can take out life insurance policies on other people. I think so. I. <clears throat> I can't do this voice anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think so. Mine was getting kind of hurt too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no. This this seems extremely untoward, right? Untoward. I, I'm, I, I'm. I'm. Thank you. Mildly freaking out. No, I think you should totally go for it. Invitation seems, I mean, to a murder museum. Right. Same day. Within the same day that we get this. Uh, hey, by the way, you're worth three million dollars dead to Felix. Right. What could go wrong? It was at that time I realized they were stone cold shitting me. I don't know. It seems kind of classy. I think it's a black tie affair. What's Look official? at the font. Look at that font. It's Comic is, Sans. No, it's not. No, it's not. You're looking at it wrong. Turn it upside down again. Oh. There you go. See? It's actually works. I can't read shit. Yeah, uh, you're not really good at this. I see. Yeah. I don't even know what Comic Sans is. I mean, this looks legit. It looks embossed, and there's a like a gilded edge to it. Ooh. I think nobody would set me up. Do you think we should reach out to the local constable? There's, uh, a, there's a constable here? Other than, uh, what was that guy's name? Something like a, like brown, uh, brown Luckily, like Kevin, I had like, just looked up the word know, constable. Uh, uh, so, check. Well, check, check the uh, check the envelope. What is it? Is there like an address on it? Where Where is this place? Yes. At least, are we getting set up? It's got an. It, it's like it a has sniper's like, nest, like coordinates. Yeah, it just says. Over All right, there. well, let me pull out the phone. We'll look at this. Look at it. We got like, like twenty eighteen. There's a nice. map. Hold on, guys. There's a hand drawn map, and it just it it shows us X. Yeah. you are here. And it shows it just us says, on the map. It just says us. Us are here. That's weird. And then just a little arrow, and it says over there. It does like, just say like, over there, like right over there. Like, am I am I wrong? Am Let's I making see. this up? Okay, it actually says us, and it's an arrow that says just over there. And there is a little picture of the building. So, I, but we don't know what, what's the scale on this. There's no scale. Well, let's let's walk outside. Let's just let's just uh, the arrow. Okay, it looks we'll like it's going this way. Let's go. Arrow, let's then. walk yeah. it. Let's it just out. go over here, down this. Okay, just go down this. Hallway. You have to keep holding it in the same direction, otherwise you're going to be walking in this. Well, because it's always in front, front of me. Right. Right. Nick Spry obviously right. confused a piece yeah, of paper north. with a compass. Uh, okay, so, okay look, the look. bond on the paper draws it to magnetic north. Exactly. That's the whole point of getting the good paper. Right. Oh, that's that is really nice paper. That's really nice. But, right, just, so, well, there is just like a little smiley face kind of on the front of the oh, wait, floor where we're going. Yeah, there's a stick. Get over this. There's a little log. There it comes. All right, mm-hmm. okay. Keep uh, walking no, this way. It's barely a twig. Why are we really worried about that? I don't see any kind of structure here, guys. What? Look, look behind you. 
What the fuck? Holy shit. It's like shit. a really big building. How did we not notice that it's before? It's spooky. It almost looks like a hospital or like a hotel That's or something. Weird. We got outside. It literally looked like a hospital we had just stepped outside of. Well, this is uh, this is this is disconcerting. It con- it confirms my suspicions that this is a goddamn setup. Look at this. Windows are blasted out. No lights. This looks like dilapidated hotel of fear. But there's a car parked up front, though. Yeah, that is kind of an old timey. Like, what is it? Like a 1950s what, whoa, whoa, style. Whoa, whoa, like, who's that? There's whoa, a there's that guy, a guy snooping around. That he is a stout he individual. He's over here. You there with the queer haircut? What's your name? So I see you accepted the invitation, huh? How do you know about the invitation, right, guys? Yeah. Well, obviously he sent it, guys, because who else would know about it besides us and and, 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 and the, sent the it. sender? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whoever he's decided to tell. Yeah, of course I said. Look, I'm trying to start a small business here. This is a museum, you know. what I'm saying, I'm just trying to you know get some extra bucks, and if I can get you guys in here, then maybe you'll bring more people. You know what I mean? So, okay, you sent the invitation, and you have a museum opening. Yes. In this house. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about this house, and now now I'm intrigued. Eh. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. Well, you take a house, right? You get a house. And then you start loading all kinds of wacky shit in there. Well, like what kind of wacky shit? Oh, you know, like, uh, weird stuff people want to pay money to look at. Okay. 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 And then you hang it up all over the walls, you know, there's some glass cases, a little couple trinkets here and there, you know, some knickknacks. Ooh. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, that house... Museum. museum, and that's what's going on in here. Exactly. Don't you have to have a gift shop? I, I was going to say the same thing. Mm, yeah, if they're going to leave, that like a byline, like he just insinuated that people don't leave the museum. That is true. That is true. Wait, what did you say your name was again? Um, I realized then he was being aloof. Listen, I'm just a two bit hustler here. I'm just trying to you know start a little business, make a little bread for myself. You know what I mean? Are you guys voters? Yeah. You guys voters? Yeah, Constable yeah. Dirt McCoy. Oh, he's a oh, constable. Oh, uh, oh I didn't shit. Know that. Wait. I didn't even know what a constable was, honestly. Just to be honest with everyone, if we're just being honest. I trust him immediately. The, well, where's your hat if you're the constable? I don't believe this shit. He immediately proceeded to produce a hat. It was the most gorgeous I've ever seen. Ooh, wow, God. damn. That's, that's, that's a nice hat. Wow. That is authoritative. I'm stunned. Is that felt or velvet or something? I decided to take it off because you get sweaty moving wacky shit into the <laughs> into the house into to make house. a museum out of it. All right, you know right, I, mean? right. I guess maybe it's starting to Constable Dirt McCoy, some, some what can you tell us about this house? And what was your inspiration? Well, you see, when they came up the, with the idea here of having a murder museum, I thought, you know, I was definitely inspired by... Uh, you guys ever heard of H.H. H. Holmes? The no. architect? Uh, not exactly. The Is porn the star? With the really big penis? Yeah. yeah, the porn star? No, that was uh, John Holmes. Oh, uh, uh, you did that really no. quick. Is it the wrestler? Triple H? No, that's no. Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Oh, okay. See, H.H. H. Holmes was the very first serial killer in uh, United States history. Really? Uh, in 1893, he started construction on uh, the World's Fair Hotel in uh, Chicago, Illinois, um, which is now known as the Murder Castle. Yeah, that's right. They, they were doing the, the, the 1894 World's Fair happened in Chicago, and it was, uh, um, it's like where they unveiled the Ferris wheel, I think was the first time yep. they did that. And uh, uh, there, there was a first great- funnel cake. When he designed the hotel, uh, he turned the entire interior of the hotel into a living game. There were never-ending hallways. There were blast charges that were behind mirrors, behind pictures. There were rooms that were actually sealed gas chambers. So people would check into the hotel and find themselves in a never-ending maze. They couldn't get out. Oh they, were, um, they were gassed. They were, uh, they were shot. They were bludgeoned. Um, their bodies were soaked in acid baths, and the remains almost completely liquefied. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. This is in Chicago, Illinois? Chicago, Illinois. And it was yes. the World Fairs Hotel? The World's Fair Hotel. It was actually, it was such a big hotel that it took up almost an entire city block in wow. downtown Chicago. That's how large of a hotel it was. How many people would be staying at this hotel at any given time? The hotel only had three floors. Uh, the third floor actually was uh, originally a storage area, and then he began construction on that third floor in late 1893, telling his investors that he was expanding for the World's Fair. That's the reason why they were dubbing that hotel to be the World's Fair Hotel. What he was actually doing was creating a uh, another floor in which um, tenants would, or I'm sorry, guests would come in 
and be trapped amongst the never-ending hallways that would lead them right back into detrimental situations that he had set up for them. So it was almost like a uh, a, a, a like a mouse's maze. That's and terrible. and I heard uh, he also had easily uh, accessible chutes to drop bodies down to furnaces. Yes. So like instead of garbage chutes, it had body chutes. Well, and in the basement yeah. of the hotel, he had f- furnaces and he had acid baths. And so that's what he was doing is he would take the dead bodies and he would either incinerate them or uh, you can only incinerate so many bodies in a day before the so smoke, I know it. Before the smoke <laughs> becomes very evident. And so that was in the situation where he decided to start using acid baths because it was less conspicuous. Oh. Isn't it true that he was getting rid of some of the bodies by like basically getting rid of all the flesh on them and just selling off the skeletons to medical schools at the time? Because skeletons and, and human cadavers were in great need for medical students training doctors. Right. And actually, he was he was a doctor himself, and that's why he was able to do that. Really? Yeah. He graduated from the University of Michigan in 1884. Most of his activity was never questioned because he was actually regarded as a doctor. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. did they ever catch this guy? Like, what, what, what the fuck? Like, yeah, he-, he was actually apprehended in 1894, and, uh, and he was brought to trial and hanged. Whoa. All right. Right. Uh, well, how many people do they think he killed? Uh, he confessed to 27 murders. What? After the course of his execution, they linked it to more than 200. Jeez. Yeah, but some so, of the people he said he killed were still living. So he kind of yes. he, he kind of yes. weaved his own web of lies so that maybe people little... can give him credit and say, oh, I don't know if he did that. Right. But he was, do. He was a master the way, manipulator. Sure. But the way they came to the number of 200 was by the number of people who checked into uh, the murder castle that were never heard of again. Interesting. Well, okay, let's say you have a hotel. Wouldn't you say 200 people who checked in never check back up at the hotel again? Or do you mean like they were killed? Well, they didn't have Yelp back then, so you couldn't really like, <laughs> like gotcha. post was a Yelp review? review and be like, totally was killed. Never totally left. Totally never going here again. <laughs> in an acid bath right now. <laughs> Negative one star. So how, how did they end up catching him eventually? The insurance companies were uh, pressing to prosecute him for arson. He was also like a... Trying to fraud life insurance companies, yes. right? Yeah, exactly. Wait Which a minute. is exactly. Oh, God damn it. Oh. Yeah. Felix. So he left Chicago in July of 1894 and went to Fort Worth uh, because he had invested some uh, properties there from previous people that he had defrauded life insurance policies from. Oh. So that's where he ended up, you know, going. So he was trying to actually construct another castle, another murder castle uh, in. Fort Worth, Texas. He's looking to expand? Yes, yes. <laughs> Make it a chain? <laughs> yeah. And so, and basically what he was doing was, same thing he did in Chicago, is he was swindling suppliers out of uh, the materials to build the, uh, the the hotel or to build out the castle with, and they're just never paying just on any of his debts. Just credit for exactly. all the lumber right. and labor. Right. And- but like, you can have a free room at the hotel mm. any night you want, sir. And, so and that's how he kept it, um, you know, because I mean, you can't build these things and not have people eventually go, why are you putting a flamethrower behind a mirror? So he would not pay people. He would go through several different contractors to keep what he was doing secret because otherwise people would eventually go, okay, really, you're not supposed to have a saw under a bed. The noise helps me sleep. <laughs> the white noise. So his original arrest, it was for selling mortgaged goods in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Like, uh, like yeah, he's, pawn yeah. shops, pawn brokers or... He was selling goods that were that were not paid. So basically, if you had a mortgaged good, what that means is that you don't really own it. You bought it on loan or you bought it on a line of credit. Gotcha. And he was taking these items from people who, you know, he'd either crossed or done business with or whatever, and was trying to resell them again before they were actually paid off to the original loan. Gotcha. That's what he was he was arrested for, uh, and then you know promptly bailed out of jail. Uh, but while he was in jail, he struck up a conversation with a convicted outlaw named Marion Hedgepeth, who was serving a 25-year sentence. Jesus. Holmes had concocted a plan to swindle an insurance company out of $10,000 by taking out a policy on himself and then faking his own death. Ooh. Holmes promised to pay Hedgepeth a $500 commission in exchange for the name of a lawyer who could be trusted. Holmes was directed to a young St. Louis attorney by the name of... Jephtha Howe. How was Jephtha. How was in practice with his older brother, Alfonso Howe, who uh, had no involvement with Holmes or um, uh, any of the fraudulent activities, you know, at all. 
Nevertheless, he planned uh, his plan to fake his own death failed when the insurance company became suspicious and refused to pay. Probably because he was just arrested. Yes. And now he's cooking up something with an insurance policy. So his conspirator, his co-conspirator, uh, the guy's name was Pietzel. When the previous attorney said, hey, we're not going to pay on it. Uh, the two of them just moved on, and they started finding other in- other attorneys and other insurance companies they were trying to swindle. And when it became clear to Holmes that this guy was not going along with what he wanted to do, uh, he chloroformed the guy and killed him as well. Yeah, uh, that seems yeah. right. Well, he cont- wait. So he he, he took c- out a policy on his partner and then off them. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Who hasn't yeah. thought about doing right. that? Come uh, on. So he took out a policy on Pietzel, killed him, and was continuing to collect on that. Oh, pretzel. Um, right. Up. That's what started giving. That's what started getting the IRS's attention, and the United States government started figuring out where's all this money coming from, and why is this guy collecting on the insurance policies of all these people? Right. Mm-hmm. And it basically led them into the funnel, which was H. H. Holmes. And what year was this at? This was in 1894. And that's when he was caught. Yes. And the World's Fair was 1894. It was yeah. 1894. Really? But, yes, but he can start at construction on the hotel in 1893 to have it ready for the World's Fair. What else can you tell us about this guy? Okay, so this is where the the, the story gets a little uh, uh, spooky. Okay, because the rest was just normal, just work a day boiler Chicago plate shit. stuff, you know. <clears throat> Compared to what I'm about to to tell you, yes. Okay. Okay. So in uh, 2006, mm-hmm. his great great grandson. Uh, H. H. Holmes' last name was actually Mudgett. Uh, that made me want to kill people. His, his firstborn son was Robert Mudgett, who uh, became a, an accountant and was actually the city manager for Orlando, Florida. 2005, his great great grandson inherited all of the belongings of H. H. Holmes. Does the guy go by Mudgett or Holmes? He goes by Mudgett. All right, nice. Yes. He's actually an attorney in, uh, in the Midwest, in, in the Illinois, state of Illinois. Okay. So when he inherits all of the belongings of his great great grandfather, he was intrigued by you know handwritten journals and and um, and letters to home and books and all of these other things. And so he's going of through course. them. And as he starts going through these books, uh, he finds a, uh, a a detailed plan that he had written out where he was going to evade his own execution by tricking a uh, less than uh, sharp inmate that was in jail with him into taking his spot on the gallows and being hung instead of him. Really? So he might have faked his own death? So he starts into the investigation on, is H.H. Holmes actually buried in H.H. Holmes' grave? That was step one. Step two is, as he starts going through these journals, he finds a series of journals that were written between 1888 and 1891 before the construction of the murder castle. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. In those journals, he is living in London, England at the time. Okay. And in those journals between those dates, he details the murder and dismemberment of multiple prostitutes in the city of London. Really? That all coincide with the murders that were the Jack the Ripper murders. Oh, Oh, no. When did did he graduate? Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. When did he graduate from uh, medical school? In he, 1884. He was, so he was an actual doctor? Yes, he was an actual doctor. And that would fit the uh, Jack the Ripper profile. Well, Correct. I don't know, because what what I was looking at, uh, there was one detective who did not think it was a surgical hand. It looked like it was a it was a layman just hacking into throats. But Correct. there's also theories, though, that it could have been, it could have been, it was a basic knowledge of anatomy, so it could have been someone who was just skilled with butchering animals as well. Correct. Truth. Yes. Okay, so maybe he's Jack the Ripper. Uh, what is this? about the the burial site right so uh his his grand his great great grandson actually uh petitioned the state of illinois to have his remains exhumed so uh the body was in an unmarked grave so they had to file follow actual uh records from the time to figure out exactly where in the cemetery he was buried weird so they found the spot no headstone it was like a pauper's grave Exactly. It was like 148, Dr. H.H. H. Holmes. Most, most serial killers, uh, it, like people like Bundy and uh, John Gacy, all of them are buried in unmarked tombs because they don't want people going to those tombs and like worshiping these people there. Right. It's like a serial killer uh, treasure hunt. It, yeah. <laughs> you know. So they... An Easter they, egg hunt for, there you go. For, the, for killers. <laughs> so they found the spot where he was to be buried at. 
uh, they broke ground and they dug down six feet, and uh, the shovels hit a wooden coffin, wooden okay. casket, like so, you would expect. Exactly, yeah. right. So they clear the ground around and they pull it out. They open it up. It's empty. Oh, no. There's nothing in it. Oh, oh that's no. not good. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so immediately they think, okay, maybe there is some truth behind this. There's, we have an empty coffin here that's supposed to be H. H. Holmes. They do sonar on the area, and they found another mass that was twelve feet or six feet below that. So like they did in uh, Jurassic Park when they find a skeleton at the beginning. They're like, what? thump the ground, and you see this d- 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 bingo dino like DNA. So a total of twelve feet underground, they find a cement sarcophagus because he has had specifically asked to be buried in cement. Really? Yes. That's mm, that why. Weird. Don't know. So they take the coffin. So out. they pull it out. Uh, his his body is bones. All of the soft tissue had eroded off of it, except for, of course, the clothing he was wearing and his mustache for some reason. What? Awesome. Mustache was intact. No other flesh on the body. But his brain was completely intact and preserved inside of his skull. Because it was connected to the mustache. And, <laughs> it's all and, one unit. I don't know. They're all they, they're connected. Sense. How can you have a mustache if you don't have any lips? I don't know. That's it. Yeah. The he mustache like a... does not need lips. The lips are lucky to have the mustache. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so they, uh, they, they do DNA testing and find out that indeed that is H.H. H. Holmes. He did not evade his execution date. Uh, he was hung. He was hanged. And, uh, and, uh, that side of the story is, is settled. The question would be now, uh, and there's really no way to, to, to narrow it down, but based on his travel logs and based on his diaries, he was in London between 1888 and 1891 when the Jack the Ripper killings took place. So there is the possibility that H.H. H. Holmes was not only America's first serial killer, but he was also Jack the Ripper. When you think about it, it makes a little bit more sense because... It's almost like what would a serial killer that normally does what he does in his hotel do on his vacation? Yeah, right? you know? exactly. You, just, oh. you know, kind of stretch it out a little bit. Just you know, there's like basically they were like the the dead prostitutes were like the zip line for uh, serial killers. You know, just something a little crazy. Oh, I would never normally do this. I'm just gonna not I'm just gonna leave this body right here on the ground. Woo! There's some constable standing around going, "What a bloody Americans on holiday." <laughs> so let me get this straight. Your inspiration for building this museum was America's first serial killer and slash or Jack the Ripper? Correct. We're going in. Four tickets, sir. <laughs> It'd be crazy not to. I mean, that seems like perfect. This you just no-brainer. made yourself a sale. This is a no-brainer. Let's, yeah. let's take a little break. Uh, I think this one's on me. Ooh, Ooh well, treatsies. Like yeah. nice. like Espe- especially if I die, I think I'm going to make a lot of money. That's yeah, not how that works. You're you still didn't sign out, those right? papers. You're listening to Fort Fritz. That should take care of it. Nice. Good. Okay. Good, good. Yeah. Thanks for paying for uh, our admittance. That's yeah. nice. That's very nice. That's really yeah, unusually it. generous of you, Fritz. Normally, okay. there's a whole thing that goes with it, but this time you're just gonna you pony it up. I like it, guys. <laughs> guys, don't mention it. All right. Well, I, we, just thanks, we, we just did. We just did. We have mentioned it because. Well, don't do it again. Okay. Thanks. I secretly relish the moment where they thanked me for my act of charity. You said that one out loud. Yeah, we, we, we dude. What are, you, are you doing this weird like internal monologue thing or something? It's fine, guys. It's it's fine. Were uh, you talking to us when you said that, or yeah, Constable McCoy? The first thing I notice when I walk in is a pleasant lavender smell. Yeah, we got those Glade plugins. You know what I mean? All over the those place. Those things here. are nice, classic. Yeah. Those yeah, are classic. It's, yeah. it's a musty old building. You know, right? right. Hundreds and hundreds of years of filth and and mold. Probably a black mold. Uh, it's I a classy didn't say move. That out loud. You can barely Constable smell McCoy. the filth. You can barely just just a hint of filth. So what you're going to want to do now? You know, get single file here, and you're going to want to snake down this long hallway. Single file. All Hold right. on now. I'm behind Kaz. Hands on shoulders. Man, no, buddy. I need. We're going to need Fritz in the front here. I you're need gonna, a buddy. I need a buddy. We're we doing the buddy system. I, I need a buddy. I need to be in the front. You nope. need to be in the front. Yeah, you're leading this. You're your guys, right? You're the leader of them, right? We're doing like the yeah. conga line here. All right. Yeah. Okay. Die. All right, here we go. Now, what you want to do is go down to the end of this hallway now, right? right. Go down the end of the hallway, hang a right, 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Two doors down, Wait, hang a left. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, okay. hold on. I hold on. I'm not at the end of the hallway yet. Hold on. Keep going. Okay. Do I have to do the conga the entire time? Or can no, I just no, 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 no yeah, take a look at it. Look look long at it. I'm at the back of the line. What's the photo? Hold yeah. on, guys. Just look, give me a minute. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. This blue looks... Oh, my God. It's so cyan. Hold on. I, uh, oh, now... I got what is cyan? Holy oh, shit! Whoa! whoa oh, that's like, like a flamethrower! Holy cow! I know. It's vibrant, isn't it? No, the, no, 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 no. You just lucked out. You, that f- flamethrower just shot over your head when you bent over to tie your shoes. It's the heater in the ceiling, guys. Come that on. was not no, a no. heater, man. I'm looking at it. Look it was like a, you. the There's picture's a hole gone. Burned in the a wall. Burned hole where it the was worse was. than the library at the fort. Okay, that was even a worse flamethrower. Okay, there is most definitely. You guys are used to electric heating and air conditioning. That's what you got in your house. It's just not his old building. You know, you got a furnace. It's you know, sometimes a furnace. You gotta have some fire. You know yeah, what I mean? It's no big deal. It's not. It's fire it's, out of it's the it's pictures. Fine. You know, yeah, I wow. can't not trust that hat. That constable has. Every yeah, time I look at it, there's it, sure. something it's about so it. It gives me, it just gorgeous. gives me confidence. It yeah. gives me right. like a, totem. a certain level of honesty comes with a hat like this. Let, let's move on then. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go down down the line here. That you is a beautiful is. photo, by the way. Now, well, if if you go down to the end of this hallway here and you take another right, uh-huh. you know it down the hallway. I, I know. Bang it right. 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 I'm used to taking all these right. It's only right turns. Yeah. Now you open those doors. Right. Push those doors open. They're hard to open. These doors smell. Push those doors open. Mm. Uh, never right? mind that, it Nick Fry. Delicious. Uh, They're hard to open because all the okay. rubber around the outside. Uh, it's it's exactly. airtight. You know right. what I mean? Okay. Yeah. You know. Why does that have to be airtight? It's, airtight. it's to... efficient for the air conditioning. Yeah. One at a time. Just Fritz. You, you go in. You go in. Close the door behind you. Just check it out by yourself. These guys, right? Am I right? I mean, come on. It's just doors. Fritz, don't. It's a. That's not a good idea. Airtight room. Ah! Anything oh, could be up. That... He's down. Oh, he's down. He's down. I think he's. Yeah. He's in, uh, those he's doors are open now. Those doors okay, are open. Okay, okay, hold your breath, guys. Hold I'm your breath. Going I mean, in. He's going in. Uh, oh, it seems, he's it eating seems a large right. no, no, piece he's, of meat or something. That That's a ham. Oh my. Oh open my the doors. God. Open the doors. Oh, open the doors. Open the do- oh, oh my God. God. Dude, what's the deal? Hams? Yeah, go in there. Get some hams. All right, I mean, shit. What are you, like, what are you doing? He just what took, are you doing? You just, it was about 55 pounds of ham. I was like, I can carry this out. So you just found a huge hunk of meat and you're just chawing into it. It looked good. It's what it looks like. I'm it doing. smells good. It smells really good. I'm gonna get. Guys, you like a man, Daddy. Do you want? No. Are you sure? You no, don't I do not want. Why? I'm, n- I'm positive. I do look not how good know. it looks. No, so you guys found the ham room, I guess, right? That's the room where we yeah. store all our ham. Why do you have that in a murder museum? That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that, I'm not that, complaining. That, that, it's like a surprising bonus. Right. I mean, who doesn't like ham? You know what I mean? <laughs> you got a lot of ham? You got to have it in a room. You know Touché. what I mean? You got to keep the ham somewhere. Touche. There, there, there's a reason why you shouldn't be eating ham in a murder museum. Uh, it's definitely pork, right? No. No, it might not be. Obviously, you guys have That's never... a vegetarian. What is he? What, is it pork or not? How what? does he know? He's a vegetarian. <laughs> are, they, are, they, are vegetarians like blind people? Are their other senses get more right. powerful? They're so like vegetarians they, have a more of a meat <clears throat> sense than the rest of us? They know, like, right, extra shit about, like, the animal when they're, like, they, they can tell if it was, like, sad or whatever, had, like, a good life or it was, like, a prick. So, obviously, you guys have never heard of the Cleveland Torso Murderer? No, I have not. <laughs> the what? Very specific. Yes, the Cleveland Torso Murderer. In the long history of unsolved murders in America, few are as grisly and disturbing as the awesomely named Cleveland Torso Murderer, also known as the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. This serial killer murdered at least 12 victims, possibly 20, what? In the Cleveland area in the 1930s. But some believe he was active all the way into the 50s. Kingsbury Run was on the east side of Cleveland and was known for being a virtual wasteland of overgrown weeds and trash that led to the Cuyahoga River. During the time of the Great Depression, this area became known for being the home to several shanty towns populated with the poor and homeless. Is that what they refer to as like a Hoover town? Kind of, yeah. yeah kind, kind of like a Hoover that. town. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good, good terminology. One afternoon in September 1935, two young boys were walking home from school 
when they discovered something white in the bushes. Upon closer inspection, what they had actually uncovered was a naked body from which the head had been severed. Oh. The police soon arrived on the scene. The body was that of a young white man wearing only a pair of black socks. Not only was his head removed, but so were his genitals. Jesus Christ. The body was purposely posed on its back with its legs stretched out and its arms placed at its sides. As they began to search the area, they found another shocking surprise. There was another body just 30 feet away. Really? This time, of an older man. The body was positioned in the same way, and the head and genitals were also removed. So how were they both positioned? Was one looking at the other? They're on the same way, on the ground, their arms at their side, their legs spread out. But face up without the face. Yeah, yeah. So like making like murder snow angels. (laughs) So laying on their back. Yeah. Gotcha. God, I love the idea of murder snow angels, I just gotta say. We haven't opened for them yet, but I might be in them next week. We gotta Google that name. Then they discovered some hair sticking out of the ground. They carefully dug and found one of the missing heads. Uh, Was it the old guy or the young guy? It was the old guy. (laughs) (laughs) The other head was later found a short distance away, as were the severed genitals. The police said it looked like these body parts were simply tossed aside like garbage. Who would throw away, you know, I, a call me a waste not want not, a perfectly good set of genitals. Yeah. I'm not throwing those away. So you know, my uses. mother told me. You can, you can make like a broth. Yeah. You know, there's a just stock. so many different things. A stock, mm-hmm. genital stock. What would a genital stock soup base be called? Balls. Booyah base? <laughs> base? Ball you base? Ball you base? Ball you base. However, due to the lack of blood, they knew that this was not the murder site. The corpses had obviously been cleaned and prepared after death. An autopsy was performed on the bodies, and it covered a few odd things. The young man, it seemed, was killed roughly three days ago, while the older man had been dead for at least two weeks. Ew. And a chemical was found on the body as if someone had tried to preserve it. Oh, almost like pickling it? Basically. Really? Curing it? Old man pickles? Now, thanks to fingerprints... They discovered the young man was named Edward Adrasi, 28, and his cause of death was the decapitation. No shit. Yeah. Do they ever... Sorry. Do they ever have your fingerprints on file if you are not somehow involved in, like, a police criminal case? Like, how do you just have your fingerprints on file as just a normal Joe? I remember being uh, in school and the police showing up and we everyone had to do it. Yep. We all had to do it. You did it? Yeah. Yeah. You cuck. Well, I didn't know. (laughs) I'm like seven years old, eight years old, man. I didn't know. I was like, the nah. government was trying to keep me down. I ain't no an fucking snitch. I was in the back, arms day, folded, <laughs> listening to me, and like, arms folded, fucking hoodie on. Like, no, you're like I'm not a seven years old, seven year old Alex Jones yeah. over there. No, I grew up in, under Reaganomics. Everything was like you know different back then. <laughs> when I was a kid, my mom like loaded everyone, all the kids up in the van and drove us to the police station. And said you got to be fingerprinted. We're like, why? So if you get kidnapped one day, they'll be able to find you. And I'm like, you're really like stifling my bank heist career. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. I thought you were going to say, you're like, you need to watch these motherfuckers. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. It's like, she just did that as a precaution. Yeah. It's like, no, this, we just got to get this out you of the way. You know it was them. So what you're saying is that the, the cause of death was decapitation. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that they were murdered and then the head was taken off. Is like medieval ta- style. Yeah, the taking off of the head is what <clears throat> killed them. Was it a clean blow? Very much so. Really? How were they able to tell, does it say? Well, just because of uh, just how surgical the cuts were. It's just right that's through. A, that's a common thread with this guy is that a lot of his work was very surgical. Okay. Now, they found that he had been bound hand and foot by ropes, against which he struggled violently. Because of the skill used, the police assumed the killer was possibly a surgeon or possibly a butcher. They canvassed the area, visiting the local bars and parlors that Edward frequented, but they found a few leads, but nothing panned out. Four months later, a woman heard a dog howling near Kingsbury Run, and she went to investigate. She found the dog chained near a factory, trying to tear open a basket. She took a quick glance inside, and she told a passing neighbor that it contained hams. 
Mm. Oh, no. Hams. Delicious hams. Like you're chewing on right now. I just swallowed it, but I was. Okay, yeah, so what's so suspect about that? So you got a dog wants the hams. Yeah, of course. Dogs of course. like dog, hams. Dog don't want some hams. Who, who wouldn't want a delicious bag of basket hams? Do- dogs dogs would. and me and me too. I'm all about it. A closer look revealed it was actually a human arm. Damn, this is a big ass arm too. How the hell someone can confuse an wow. arm for a ham, I will never know. It wasn't Those Boar's Head. It wasn't definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, that's how they knew. Like, is Boar's Head better? Uh, yeah. Way better, way better. Really? Yeah, it's 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 cured. Oh, okay. It's like two dollars more, so you know it's good. Yeah. Thank you. A large burlap sack was pulled from the basket. And it contained a female torso from which the head, the left arm, and the lower legs were missing. Fingerprints again revealed the name of the victim, a local prostitute named Florence Valilo. And again, the cops had very few leads, and none of them that they did find panned out to anything. They did, however, discover her legs and left arm in a nearby empty lot. Uh, so it, she was a torso. She was just a torso, Jeez. and her head was never found. This Whoever this murderer is seems like that they have all, every intention of, like, all right, I'm going to leave this like this, and I'm going to carry off these body parts, but they take, like, 20 steps, and they're like, like ah, no, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to leave these here. Uh, uh, somebody, somebody else will clean this so up. So much work. So much work. They're yeah. so heavy, and now my clothes are bloody. I've i got to change my clothes. Yeah, I've already gone through all the work of like desanguinating these bodies and just moving them. So uh, Ooh, That's a good vocab Desanguinating. Word. Damn, yeah. man. Well done. That's nice. The public were, of course, shocked by these crimes. Of course. But were comforted by the fact that a new director of public safety had been appointed to oversee the police. His name was Elliot Ness. What? Elliot Ness of... The Untouchables. Wait, was that Kevin Costner? It was Kevin Costner. Yeah. Wait, yes, actually, in even in real time, it was Kevin Costner. Yeah, Kevin he actually Costner. he is he he appears in all timelines. Similar all people. to like a time cop situation. Yeah, he's like a time lord and a RoboCop combined. This so, was right before no. Waterworld, but after uh, Field of Dreams. So, what is Kevin Costner doing in the story? Eating ham, kicking ass, and taking names like he always does. Fucking right. cleaning up the ham shops of Cleveland. <laughs> 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 Even you could get through that. That was awesome. <laughs> Back in the days of pro ham ambition. <laughs> I need to see your ham license. <laughs> get your hams up. Now, Elliot Ness was famous for cleaning up Chicago's gangsters. And the people felt that a case like this would be easy for him. It wasn't. A few months later, the killings began again. On June 22nd, which happens to be my birthday, yo! <laughs> Two other boys were discovered. Jesus. Another head, wrapped this time in a pair of pants. The body was found a quarter mile away. But this time, there was blood at the site, meaning he was killed there. Oh, no. Jeez. But once, oh, no. But once again, the decapitation was the cause of the death. But the police were unsure how he was restrained while the deed was done. Mm, okay. The body was never ID'd. Three weeks later, another decapitated male body was found in a ravine. The head was found nearby. But still, the body was unable to be ID'd. Wait, they could identify all these other ones with fingerprints, but not these last two? They had, they, they checked all the records. So of course, it's the 1930s, so okay. things weren't yeah. as you know complete as they are now. So is this 1935 still? Uh, this is still in... 35. Yeah, yeah okay. this is still 35. The killer struck again in 1936. The body of a man was found in Kingsbury Run. His genitals were removed, and the body was sliced in two. Completely, cleanly in two. Do you mean horizontally or vertically? Yeah, I was going to say hot dog or... Horizontally. Whoa. Horizontally. Okay. That's a hamburger cut. Yeah. Not far from the body was a hobo camp where vagrants and homeless people lived. But searches and questioning of the occupants yielded nothing. Months went by with no murder, but also no arrests. Then in 1937, the butchered body of a young woman was found along the shore of Lake Erie. Is this like, uh, what, victim 12 at this point? Uh, I think at this point is 9 or 10. Okay. Then... 
Another female body was discovered by a hiker. This time it appeared that the woman was killed last year and had never been discovered. But same kind of M.O.? Same M.O. Then, the headless body of a young man was found floating in a river. Jesus Christ. Never identified. Still, no leads. Several months later, a leg was pulled out of the river. And three weeks after that, two burlap bags were found that contained more body parts. Oh, determined to be from a woman in her 20s. Some, some homeless guy is like, I pee in there! Ah, oh, That is disgusting! And I bathe in there! Oh. <laughs> then... The killer went silent for more than a year. Then, in 1938, a torso of a woman was found in a dump along with the body of a man. The twelfth victim was discovered, wrapped in a quilt, but still unidentified. And Elliot Ness still had no clue who the killer was. Out of frustration, Ness ordered a raid on the shantytown near the ravine. They arrested hundreds and burned down the shacks and shanties. The murder stopped. Whether it was co- coincidence or not, no one knows. But after he burned down the shanty town, the murder stopped. The police spent hours searching for the butcher's laboratory where the killings took place, but still to no avail. In January 1939, the Cleveland Press reprinted a letter that was sent from Los Angeles, allegedly from the butcher. It read, Chief of Police Manowitz, you can rest easy now as I have come to sunny California for the winter. I felt bad operating on those people, but science must advance. Weird. I shall astound the medical profession. A man with only a DC. What did their lives mean in comparison to hundreds of sick and diseased twisted bodies? Just laboratory guinea pigs found on any public street. No one missed them when I failed. My last case was successful. I now know the feeling of Pasteur, Thoreau, and other pioneers. Right now I have a volunteer who will absolutely prove my theory. They call me mad and a butcher, but the truth will out. Signed, X. No head was found at the location. At one point, Ness felt like he had found the killer with the arrest of Frank Dozal. After hours of questioning, the man confessed to the crimes. Really? But later, the evidence they used to arrest him was found to be false. But it didn't stop Dozell from hanging himself in jail. The investigation, of course, continues on. But a true suspect has never been found. And by the way, it is notable that some draw a very close parallel to the Torso Killer and the murder of the Black Dahlia. Yes! That is true. And the killer went to sunny California. You know, as we you know, as we like to do. You know, you like to go to a new area when you want to just retire, stretch back, kill a, a, an actress here and there. You know, just for holiday fun. You might say that he got headhunted out of state. Gotcha. Gotcha. Picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, I like it. It's like puns. <laughs> so yeah, these uh, these uh, these delicious hams you're mawing on might not be you know. Mmm, steamed hams. Now I put it down because uh, I started getting like a pain in my cheek. Are, are you allergic to people? No, I found this. Look, check it out. What the hell is uh, that? There's a bunch of them in the meat. Are those genitals? It doesn't look like it. it's sharper than the genitals. <laughs> yeah, it does look like razor blades. Why would you have a handful of razor blades? I don't know. It was in the meat. Oh, you so have cool. razor blades in your meat. What is this like a bizarre? You urban didn't say legend wacky shit was in here. I guess that's I mean, true. That I mean, would be wacky it's shit. Pretty wacky that? to have razor fairly, blades yeah. in your ham. But, uh, you eat enough hams, you're gonna bite a couple razor blades, man. It's just the way of life. It's it one happens. of those uh, those self slicing hams, right? Like it's uh, you just gotta kind of like that throw it on convenient. the ground and it'll just like slice itself apart. That is convenient as hell. Does Incredible. Does anybody else find it? You know, maybe just a, a, a odd coincidence that uh, there's been multiple. What seem like attempts on Fritz's life uh, after we've received these insurance papers, guys? I'm used to that by now. I mean, I just, I just thought that's the way the guy led his life. Just people were trying to kill him constantly. That was the first time I realized Dermot McCoy's trying to kill my ass. I mean, this is just a murder museum. I mean, it's just part of the experience, of course. This yeah. is all vir- It's all CGI, man. Everything you're seeing right now doesn't real. It's not real. Oh. CGI. Well, I that's should not. hope that you know. Well, that pick up that razor blade. It's all CGI. Pick Ow! It up. Son of a. Bitch. Okay, then not that one, the other one. Uh, that one's uh, that one's so yeah. oh. uh, okay. You guys keep picking up the real ones. 
Uh, Maybe you should have less real razor blades and more CGI ones. I don't know if it's a budgetary thing or something. Well, How feel- do you make the CGI razor blades if you don't have a real one to go on? I I think we should take our own tour of this house. You've directed it enough, sir. I think we're going to go... Just do a little exploring. In we're going to check this out. Okay. I want to check this out. All right, we're going to take a break. You're listening to Fort Fritz. Little did they know, I squirreled away that ham hog. After several minutes of talking with Kaz and Man Daddy and Nick Spry, I realized my life was in grave danger. So we we got to get away from all of these traps. I this constable am said already. Let's go. I'm I'm done with this guy. I'm he, don't look at the hat. He's also, at, don't, yeah, don't look at his hat. He it draws it, you in. It draws you back in. We're gonna make our own path through this murder museum, and we're gonna find out what the fuck's going on. Because there's definitely it. been some attempts on Fritz's life. I See, agree, yeah. but do you have evidence, or is that just hearsay? Insurance Creepy. papers? Come on, that's it's the the timing, the timing, right. the timing is too close. That yeah. is Let's true. Go, we, if, you know, I bet there's like an administrative office or something. We'll get some paperwork, find out who owns the building. We'll Elise find out who briskly barreling down that hallway. Look at him go. Yeah, He's let's. I'm gonna charge. go. Uh, uh, here he comes. Uh, okay, uh, listen, you guys, uh, you listen. All right, what? You got free ham, right? right? That wasn't included in the ticket. I did that out of my own, you know, kindness of my own heart. Possible mm-hmm. human bodies. Okay. Flames, the heat, you know, is it's like a weenie roast in here. You know what I'm talking about? It is, uh, it is huh? cold outside. So. I didn't even think we could take the huh? ham to the flamethrower, get a char oh. on it. He's yeah, so yeah, charming yeah, yeah. when you look at him and you talk uh, to him. But stop like, looking at that. It was right. the hat. It was the hat. It was the hat all the look time. Away. It was the hat. That hat has power. Look at this. Look at this door. What's up with the store? Uh, it says employees only on the online. That's placard. what it says. Yeah. God damn, I got to learn how. To read. Well, it's well. okay. A lot of people don't know how to read. Okay. okay? Thank you. Can you teach me? I don't know how to read. Oh shit. So should we go in there? I mean, if we're going to complain somewhere, obviously where employees lurk. And I would think they would lurk in an employees-only type <clears> room. <throat> That's true. I made sure to scribble down the word employees, and I later looked it up in the dictionary. Still don't know what it means, but I'm working on it. All it's- right, so it's locked, Kaz, as you would expect it to be. But, yes. Kaz, just take the store out. All right. You got just just barrel at it. Just take 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 out your week on this door. All right. Yeah, it's been it's been a long one. Yeah. It is at the top. It's like Beetlejuice style. It's like right at the top of the stairs you gotta into the attic. You so gotta- I got to run up the stairs and hit it, and I got to get enough force. So get get out of the way. Clear you, away. Uh, give, you got to want face. it. You gotta want it. He Look wants at my it. Look face. at his eyes. Look at his eyes. No, no, no. Uh, listen, you don't want to go up there. It's just an employee's room. You don't. There's nothing there for you. Don't not listen to that. Suspect. It's not part of the tour. That hat, though. Don't look Stop at the hat. looking at the hat. The look hat at, at the no. door. Look at his feet. Look at the ham. Anything look, other than the look hat. Look at my back. Fritz, it's... we are trying to save your life. Cass, take out that door. All right, All right here we go. Fire on it. Head, bip, 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 bip. Dude. Oh. Something. Oh, wow. wow. That was impressive. I knew he could do it. He had it in him Snap the whole into time. a Slim Jim. All right. Uh, <clears throat> you guys are paying for that door. No, it's... we're not. Absolutely nothing up here except for a desk and a nice chair. And a lantern. Oh. Whoa, no way. I want to see. I've never seen a lantern. Hang on, let me uh, let he me was... secure the perimeter. I'm gonna like make sure there's nothing deadly, Whoa. falling axes or these books and bookshelves. Just this a is a big... fancy ass office. What are all these Ooh. pieces of paper? What are they Well, why don't you read them? You can well, read them. This right? is the as I fucking suspected, the same insurance company as the document that we got sent to the fort. So this confirms my suspicions. The constable what is, is somehow say? in cahoots with... Who is... What is this? this? Oh, no. What? What? Did you get all of that information from this talking leaf? Look at the signature. Right. In red. My, that's what that color is. That's definitely red. Okay. What sounded out? What is that? You know that you name. Can do You've it. seen you it. You can do it. First one, F. What sound is that? That's a F. What sound does it make? All right, next letter. Next letter. One, well, you can do it. Yeah. Close. E- Almost. E- yeah. E- yeah. 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 Yes. 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 He's learning. He's, He's learning. learning. Third letter. Third letter. Moving on. La. Yeah. Well, Ooh. that's cool. Now put La. string them together. String those first three together. What do you got? Okay. okay. Keep Fila. going. Keep going. God four. damn it. Letter number four. What's the last one? Fela Cootie. Eh. Okay. Be all right. Dough. All right. Bring it on home. Bring it. In. Bring it into the home plate. Come on. Come What's on, buddy. What's the last one? We, we got, got this. this. What is the one? Yeah. D- that's crisscross. You know, yeah. It looks like no applesauce. Yeah. Feeling no crisscross applesauce. Come on. Eh. 
Oh, like an S. You could have just said S. Well, no, no, it's not an S. S. Felix. It's, Felix. It, there you go. No, yes. yeah. It's an S. That's an S, buddy. Felix. What does that mean, though? Well, no, 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 no. He took out an insurance policy. Give me that paper. Why did it take us so long to figure it out when we could read and he couldn't? Don't take the talking leaf away from me. Talking leaf was a murder museum. Incorporated United States Insurance Company. What? What? Murder Museum Incorporated Insurance Company, United States. Uh, the Felix. Don't you guys realize? I then had to research Bring what exactly out. life insurance That's not was. Normal for you, guys. Don't you see? Felix is taking out an insurance policy on Fritz, leaving him as the sole beneficiary in case of Fritz's untimely demise. He reinherits the fort, and that's bad. That that's, is bad. That's, that's bad. Good. That's bad for Fritz. That's, that's bad for me. Out. That's I bad for Fritz. Out. So this is a setup. Where's the constable? Where'd he go? He's, oh, oh, oh shit! It's guys, just the hat. No, this reminds me. I, I've heard this before, I, guys. Have you ever heard of the dumbbell murder? No. What? Oh. Let me tell you. So. Ruth Brown became Ruth Snyder after marrying her beau, Albert. So in 1915, they got married. Uh, he was 14 years her senior. She was 20 years old at the time, and he, Albert was 34 years old. Uh, their romance had been sort of a happy accident. She had started working for the telephone company when she was 13 years old and was a telephone operator. She made a misconnection and accidentally rang up Albert at his office. He was the art editor for Motor Boating hey, 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 hey. Magazine. That's a... Wow. A very successful publication at the time. Of course it was. Uh, he was extremely rude to her and hung up on her and then felt some sort of Remorse. urge yeah. to call back and struck up a conversation with him. And they decided to start going out and proceeded on a romantic route. It's kismet. Uh, it was kismet. So they were out whining and dining, going out on the town, going dancing, drinks, fancy dinners and all of that. And She's then only they got, 20. What drinks? She was, she, was, she was 19 years old. Okay. they met. Uh, in 1914. So it was wine coolers. As, oh, yes, it's 19, the year before that they she, they got married. They it's met. 1914, yes. then never mind. Yeah, no one cares. Okay. So, they get married, and much to her dismay, after the nuptials are agreed to, she finds that her husband is a sour, curmudgeonly man, uh, some would say very foul-tempered, and was very much a homebody. So, after they get married, no more going out, no more fun, and this is even increased, the, exacerbated by the birth of their only child, Lorraine, in 1918. Is this guy's last name Killjoy? No, his name was Snyder. She knew she called him, and the first thing he did was be a prick on the phone, and then she's like, oh, well, he's, he's not... He no. can change. Uh, well, hey, don't victim shame her. Is she, we don't even know she's the victim. Well, uh, she is not the victim, actually. Ah! Uh, so we can shame her all we want. She just made bad relationship decisions. <laughs> so, like I said, the, 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 the chasm in this loveless marriage is deepened by the birth of this child. Uh, and so the resentment and bitterness build between the two after years and so on and so on. Uh, so during this time, the 1920s occur. The jazz age comes into fashion. Uh, Ruth becomes the very epitome of what is known as a flapper. Oh, yeah. She bobs her hair. She goes out... Uh, she she builds a, a penchant for drink. She goes out gambling. Uh, she loves to play bridge. She goes out all night dancing. Uh, bridge. Yeah. Never thought of bridge as the wildlife. Whoa. <laughs> uh, she earns the nickname quote Gay Tommy end quote. I don't oh, know shit. what that. Yeah. <laughs> she was the woman's she, name is Ruth, and she like she comes up with the nickname Gay Tommy. Yeah, there you go. She's a badass. I like this yeah, totally. I'm digging her. So she would be out <laughs> until all hours of the night, and Albert was having none of this. He would stay at home with the baby Lorraine in their uh, Queens Village, Long Island, New York home. Just pissed, Just mad as hell, stewing, drinking, watching the baby. So Ruth was not a beautiful woman per se. But she was a tall, statuesque blonde of uh, Scandinavian descent, and she was said to have sort of a, an electrifying air of sexuality about nice. her. Nice. Damon Runyon, the uh, noted newsman, who was also known for Runyon's Tales, which Guys and Dolls, the musical, was based off of. Oh, of course. Um, he recovered the trial, which she was eventually involved in, and uh, described her as, quote, a chilly-looking blonde with frosty eyes and one of those marble you-bet-you-will chins, end quote. Damn. <laughs> I've never looked Bet at a chin will. and thought that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is all well and not good until the summer of 1925, June. During a lunch at Henry's, a cafe in Manhattan, a mutual friend of hers introduces her to his friend, Henry Judd Gray. Uh, their attraction was immediate and a palpable intensity, and their affair would start shortly thereafter. Uh, Judd, as he went by, was 33 years old. He was a corset salesman, and he was employed by the Bien Jolie Corset Company, which just means pretty good. 
the pretty good corset company. <laughs> really? Yeah. Ben, but it's so bien, fancy. It's French. Yeah. Well, Julie yeah. refers to being like beautiful, pretty, and bien means good, but it's like, eh, we're pretty good. So he lived with his wife and child in East Orange, New Jersey. Uh, Gray was a short, ordinary-looking man that sported large, circular eyeglasses, giving him the look of constant surprise several sources cite. Hmm. Um, Runyon describes Gray as, quote, an inert, scared, drunk fellow that you couldn't miss among any hundred men as a dead setup for a blonde or the shell game or maybe a gold brick on trial for what might be called, for want of a better name, the dumbbell murder. It was so dumb, end quote. <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot of shade from yeah, that. Yeah, no. really this guy's got some snap to his yeah. journalism for it's, sure. Well, it's, you got to think it's the age of sensationalism in the in the news. So people were looking for sex and violence, and it was like, so what oh, the hey. hell are we in now? Well, <laughs> I mean, but there was no radio, the there was no days. social media. It was you read the newspaper and live vicariously through these thrilling tales of the what? underworld, and oh well, these gangsters. Well, now they're going around town with them alls. This is 1925. Still, this was 1925 when they met. Yes, so. uh... Gray was totally under Ruth's spell. Uh, she had a, a, a large sexual appetite, and their torrential affair included frequent uh, liaisons at the Queen's Village house while Lorraine attended school, and even more frequent meetings afternoons at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in uh, Manhattan, where Lorraine was left to fend for herself in the lobby as Ruth would go upstairs to have one off with Judd. Wow. Just hang out. I'm going to go bang it out. Yeah. I'll be right back. What a great mother. In fact, their frequent visits were so frequent that the bellboys, the bellhops at the hotel, had learned the lovers' nicknames for one another. Ruth was referred to as, quote, Momsy. Oh, God. Yes. And Jed was called Bud or lover boy. All right. I'm, uh, starting, I'm starting to go a little bit. So he was, li- he was working for the, weekend, off you know, yeah. living for the weekend? So we're stuck with gay Tommy. Things are going hot and heavy. Ruth is becoming increasingly and increasingly unhappy in her marriage, and she starts to constantly complain to Judd of her loveless marriage and how she's wrongfully mistreated by her husband Albert. Uh, she entreats him to aid her in a permanent solution that would make them one able to be together, despite his wife and kid, because it was mm-hmm. easier for a man to leave his wife than for a woman to leave her husband. Am I right? As it should be. It's true, and would also get them rich in the process. As it uh, should be. It would come out that during this, uh, during the trial that Ruth had made as many as seven previous failed attempts to kill her husband. Jesus. None wow. of which succeeded, and nor did they elicit any sort of suspicion from her or of her by Albert. So she She's tried apparently <laughs> she apparently she apparently used like sleeping powders or tried to poison like his tea or it made him violently ill, but he was just uh, He's like, Jesus Christ, how much salt did you put in this suit? <laughs> and she goes, attempt six, failure. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Is this another bowl of sleepy stew? I don't get this. <laughs> so finally, after a while, uh, this idea just becomes so uh, obsessed upon by Ruth. Uh, and she just whittles away at, at Judd, and he breaks down and agrees to it. Uh, once he agrees to it, he starts heavily drinking, it's noted. Um, so Ruth took out three insurance policies on her husband's life. She was helped by Leroy Ashfield. Uh, he was a crooked insurance agent that, that would eventually get jailed for his involvement in the crime. And the last of these three policies was worth forty-five dollars to $48,000 and had a double indemnity clause in it, which means you get uh, double the payout, twice the payout in case of death as the result of a crime or an accident. <laughs> just, just, it's just basically gambling on death. It's like, come on, murder. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Let me kill my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Mama needs a new pair of shoes. Uh, so now as to the bungled crime itself. Uh, this happened on the evening of March 19th and the early morning of March 20th, 1927. Um, Gray had rented a hotel room in Syracuse, New York, and then taken the train down to the city. And then from the city, he took a bus out to, Queen, uh, to Long Island, uh, Queens Village. He was spotted by several neighbors lurking about the slinking about the neighborhood during the day. It was a cold day, and he was drinking from a flask. Like I said, he had become quite the drunk during this time. Uh, so by this point, uh, Ruth's influence over him was total, and he was just agreeing to her every detail. Uh, she left the back door open to the family home, according to plan. Uh, he snuck inside. They were out this evening at a party, which was very unusual for them. Uh, she had also left for him a pair of gloves... An untethered window sash weight and chloroform. So a sash weight is basically there's these type of windows that swing outward and there's a counterweight on the side that are on basically a pulley system. Mm-hmm. These things weigh four to five pounds. They're like little metal bars. 
Okay. So, Judd sneaks into the house and waits for the family to come home from the party. It's around maybe 2 to 2.30 in the morning. They come home. Albert is completely hammered because Ruth has been feeding him drinks all night. The family goes to bed, quote-unquote. Uh, Albert is murdered. Ruth's account is that during the night, a burglar with a, quote, Italian-style mustache, end quote, <laughs> of course. breaks into the house, ransacks the place, kills Albert, and ties her up. Uh, and she actually is uh, wakes her daughter, Lorraine, with cries of help and tells her to go to the neighbors that she needs help, but refuses help from the neighbors to be untied until the police arrive. Hmm. So please show up. Things are a little bit suspect. Yeah, just don't uh, just leave it, honey. Just leave is, it. I'm comfy. She is not very well bound. She's very, very loosely bound. Could have easily escaped. Um, there's no sign of forced entry. Uh, she has reported that $200 have been stolen from Albert's wallet, which is missing, and that her jewels have also been stolen. The police easily find them immediately tucked under the mattress. Albert, he has been beaten... Uh, with this apparent window sash weight. He has also had chloroform stuffed up into his nostrils and rags, has had his face covered in rags, and then was garroted with picture frame wire. Ooh. So the cause of death is not quite sure which is the one that actually killed him, because medical science back then, not so hot. Like a smorgasbord of death. Yeah. He was also shot nine times. (laughs) Set on fire and beat with a rake. And drowned. So like I said... Uh, it was, it looked, the, the police never suspected for one second that it was actually a burglary. The, the burglary. Bur, burglary. Burglary. A robbery. <laughs> right. And here is a key piece of evidence. Before Ruth and Albert were ever married, Albert had been engaged to a woman for 10 years, Jesse Guissard, who passed away. And he still held a torch for this woman despite her death. And even after uh, him and Ruth were married, he kept a picture of the woman in their bedroom, and he had a stick pin tie pin that went, uh, that said the letters JG on it. Aww. It fell somehow, was discarded onto the carpet during the struggle. Apparently, Albert didn't go with the first blow, and uh, there is testimony between different people that say that Judd had to cry for help, and Ruth actually dealt the killing blow to her husband. So this tie pin on the floor, the police find. They say JG. They look at the date date book that Ruth had and they see one of the entries is Judd Gray after they bring her to the station they ask her well what about Judd Gray and they bring out this stick pin and she uh, idiotically goes oh has he confessed <laughs> what so the police know that something's up. they know that they got this, this this woman that somehow she is involved and obviously so is Judd Gray What's amazing too is is how many neighbors saw him like drunkenly like float down to where this was, around. almost like he's like wearing a bikini, like just loudly <laughs> singing Portishead lyrics, like drinking from a fucking bottle. So the police latch onto this and they press Ruth. She immediately confesses, uh, but she blames everything upon Judd. Of course, they apprehend him. He says he has nothing to do with it, but he's still in the hotel room in Syracuse, and he has the tickets <sighs> for the train and the bus. Just thrown in the garbage can right there, and he has the cash on him. So they arrest him. It they immediately turn upon one another and blame the other and say, "Oh, she was entirely responsible. It was all his fault. It was all her fault." It's a he said, he said, she said moments in jail. Uh, it, the 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 story hits the papers. It becomes very very widely covered. In fact, it got more coverage in the newspapers than the sinking of the Titanic. Wow. Their trial uh, starts in late summer, nineteen twenty seven. There are <laughs> found guilty almost immediately. <laughs> Both of them just guilty. Both of them like, found yeah, guilty totally. of murder Boom. immediately. <clears throat> uh, they're imprisoned in Sing Sing, and they are executed in January, January 22nd of 1928. They both got the same day, too? They both got the same day. Jesus. Well, that's romantic, right? There's another little tidbit, though, for murder history in this. Uh, one of the most famous newspaper photographs of any tabloid uh, is because of the execution. A, a photographer, Tom Howard, who, who worked for the New York Daily News, snuck in on his ankle, strapped to his ankle, to the actual execution of Ruth Snyder. Whoa. A small camera and was able to fire off a shot of her in the electric chair with 2,000 volts running through her, and it made the front page the very next day with the headline, Dead. Wow. Jeez. You gotta think that, it, that, that he probably took like four or five shots. They had to go through and find the right one. Like, no, oh. I think that he, he could only really get off one. Uh, oh, really? So he, had to, so he nailed that. Yeah, yeah he nailed shot. that one. He, he had to sneak like that cool thing camera. in and use a cable in his in his uh, pocket in Ooh. order to fire off the shot. Wow. Uh, so yeah, they were both executed on. Um, yeah, that's all good and plenty. But uh, so 
Am I going to be dead? Well, that's why you need to watch out for these insurance papers, Fritz. Right. Well, I get that now, but am, am I going to be killed here? And no, we, we This room doesn't but, seem very deadly. Not at all. But, you know, I, all right, but, tour is over. Whoa. whoa. The tour is over. You did the whole tour. Everything's good. You got your money's worth, right? You happy with the tour? I, I, oh, was, I mean, yeah. All right, turn around. Bow face. Everybody back out the we same way you came. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot of questions. Around, I mean, go. is, is someone trying to kill yeah. Fritz or something? I mean, no, what's going on? Uh, no questions. Just yeah, go. I, turn I, around. I'm okay with it. Let's back out. out. You shouldn't be okay out, with back this. Back out. Back oh, out. Oh, God. This is not right. Ham. Ham. Oh, ham. Okay, okay, okay. I'm good. Pick one up on the way out. Yeah, oh, we'll I, need, I need a road ham. A road ham, definitely. Let's get at least two or three. I mean, this guy's being a dick. Let's just get out of here. I mean, a- extra I'm being blades. a dick. You're trying to wreck my whole museum. You guys just got to go now. Yeah. Uh, During their argument the about meat, I was able uh, to museum. pack meal 200 it's, pounds it's head, across no, my no, torso. Go, go. Get out. Get out. Dude, I don't know what's going on, but does it does it look like uh, Fritz has gained a lot of he weight? He put on some mass. He put I on hear a that mass. like fear induces hormone like fear release. Weight. So yeah, it makes you look yeah, like fe- you're just covered in ham. He's got fear fat fear for fat, sure. Yeah. For sure, okay, definitely. Let, okay, let's. I mean, well, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I don't want to die. I Push mean, him yet. through the door. Yeah, he's kind of stuck. Oh, 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 that's a greasy ham. Oh, that's a greasy ham. It's like a straight up like. Hey, fatty, you hungry? You want to go to the chicken joint? Come on, ham boy. Come on, ham boy. You like it, don't you, ham boy? Get off my Push him through. Ah, come on. Please. I'm going to give him one right to the uh, butt. Uh, oh. There it is. Oh, we got to book it, guys. He's coming after us. Oh, shit, 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 It was then I realized I had no friends. Okay, let's. we're, we're outside. Oh, thank God. Let's forget it's about this ni- place. I mean, Blessedly I'm, I'm, cool out that was here. No, yeah, it was nice. It's, it's actually right? nice out. It's I mean, less, less hammy. But yeah, there's not as much ham or flames trying to kill us or razor blades. Mother Nature don't get meat sweats. It's true. That's it's true. true. I was true. able to get some ham for you guys if you Thank want some. You. Yeah, that, and honestly, I mean, we can we can just go back and investigate the uh, the whole insurance thing. Whenever oh, we want. oh wait a minute, let's hold on. Wait, hold on, where to go? It's just a it's a it's a rubble pile now, and now it's and now it's on fire. There's there's no more building. Hmm. Where'd the building go? Now it's just a burning pile of rubble. Did you hear an explosion? I didn't hear anything. Uh, but look, no. But there, Dirt McCoy is driving off on his caterpillar. So he just destroyed the building that we were just in that quickly. Right. right. And we didn't hear anything. So that's probably what took out the building. This yeah. dude's fast. Like, I, I get He's it. Good. Like, yeah. he knew the jig was up. He took out the building. Look at him. Look at look him go. He keeps looking back at us. Like, he knows we're talking about. Look at that oh, he's hat, wa- though. He's that, waving. God damn. Look at him. He's doffing that hat. Yeah, I'm going right to wave back at him. Man. And now his wave turned into a finger now. Oh, that bastard. We should also note that it's a caterpillar, like the construction vehicle, not, not an like an insect. Uh, no, I thought it was. Uh, in my mind, it was an actual caterpillar, like, like a you know, Snow White. Thing. You got eyes, yeah. man, Daddy. Use it. Snow White. Not it was then that I realized eyes. caterpillar That's meant two things. Lazy like that. All right, uh, I guess. Um, like since the murder museum's gone, and there's someone out there trying to kill Fritz, we're just going to keep on going on with our day. That's it. Uh, thank you all very much for listening. This has been Fort Fritz. Just keep on listening. Keep on sharing. Thank you so much. Check us out on all the platforms. Libsyn, iTunes, YouTube, iHeartRadio, all the special ones. We're even on Spotify. Can you believe it? Who would have thought? But thank you so much for listening. This has been a very special Fort Fritz. As I ended the episode, I knew these guys were completely out of their mind. They had no idea what was going on. This little cuck named Fritz had no idea that there was a hit at him already. There was going to be gangsters involved just trying to get the flesh off his corpse any time now. I was okay with that. I took another shot of whiskey from my flask, went into my office, passed out for the floor. As the smell of ham wafted up from his mouth, I looked at Fritz and realized, I don't know this guy. I don't know any of these guys. I don't even really know what noir is. It's like a, it's like black in another language. But I was having trouble reading English today. I don't know. Maybe I need to move. As I listened to voiceover after voiceover, I thought to myself, what is a voiceover? Voiceover what? Over greens? Over ocean? Gosh, I haven't been to the ocean in a while. Hello? Guys? Oh shit, they left. Alright, uh, gotta go. Thanks for listening. Bye!